Many of my students ask me if they should buy flashcards. Flashcards aren't cheap. Usually a box set costs anywhere between $15 and $30. I really encourage students to make their own flashcards. Why? Well, it's a learning experience for one. You have the opportunity to do your own research, perhaps print off pictures off the internet or look at pictures in books and kind of figure out how you want your flashcards to look. And what you can also do too is organize them the way that you want to organize them. So when you make your own flashcards, you get to organize them, you get to learn while you're drawing them. And when it comes to reviewing, they're actually a lot of fun. So what do you need to do to make your own flashcards? Well, you need some index cards or you can use scrap paper as well. Some people really like color. So there's like colored uh, index cards out there that are also available to buy. And some office supply stores also sell these. These are called cram cards. They're very, very pretty, lots of different designs, comes with its own little clip there, a little bit more expensive. You can also use some glue. If you decide that you want to use images that you've printed off the internet, then the glue comes in really handy because you can cut it out and then paste it right on. I have seen flashcards made with staples, but they get a bit bulkier. I always encourage something to make holes, so you can either use a hole puncher or you can use scissors if you want to just like poke holes in it. Scissors play a big role if you're going to cut out pictures. A pen, absolutely you need, and something to hold everything together. So you can either use elastic bands, you can get little binder clips from the dollar store, and some people I've seen even use twist ties. So how do we make them? Well, you decide. Do you want to cut and paste or do you want to draw? I really like drawing. Even though my pictures never look that good, uh, what it really does is help cement in for me what are the highlight important pieces that I need to know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this card and I'm going to make one for biceps brachii. The first thing I'm going to draw is the scapula. It's kind of triangular. So I'm going to make it triangular, but the glenoid fossa is what's most important, as well as the little coracoid process. I'm also going to draw a humerus because the bulk of biceps brachii crosses the humerus. And I'm also going to draw a little radius and an ulna. I really like color. So when I use color, I like to use markers. And I'm just going to draw the muscle in. Its origin is the superglenoid tubercle as well as the coracoid process. And its insertion is on the radial tuberosity. So I'm just going to draw this all together. Here's my muscle belly and I'm going to draw some fibers. And here is my picture of the supraglenotubercle coracoid process coming down to its insertion. Now on the other side, what I'm going to do is I am actually going to start to write what the muscle is and all the details that I need. So I know it's biceps brachii. Origin is a superglenoid tubercle in the coracoid process. Insertion is radial tuberosity. Action is that it flexes the arm and supinates the forearm. And its innervation is the musculocutaneous nerve. And there's all my information. Now in the learning process, I've already repeated the origin, the insertion, and it's action like three times. So I'm going to show you some variations. We have the drawn one. If you decided to cut and paste, I've got a couple of variations. This one has a colored picture of it. And on the back, I use different colors for origin, insertion, action, and innervation. So for those that are really color sensitive, that can be a really good way to remember. For those that like to do a bit more drawing, but not too much drawing, I've got printed out here just the bones, and then I drew the muscles on top of the bones, and I have origin, insertion, and action, innervation. And here, everything's in a one-shot view, so some people prefer to see everything at once. You can also use some scrap paper or other index cards, and you can make them into a square shape. And it has the name of the muscle, and you can turn it for the origin, the insertion, and the action. If you're super crafty, one more variation here is a little slider card where you can use an old envelope, have the picture on an index card, and you can pull it out and read each part. I've also on the index card on the back here also wrote its origin, insertion, and action. Now what to do with them after you've got them? You can put them all together and carry them around and study them. Uh, so, you know, 
when you're on the bus, you can pull them out and study, uh, have a chance to read, do some self-quizzing. The other thing that you can also do with these cards is that you can also play games with them. You can either play independently or if you've got a study buddy to be able to use them. One example would be to put the cards down and look for commonalities. Quiz each other. Which muscles here, these are all muscles that I have that attach somewhere there that cross over the arm here, is thinking what muscles do flexion of the arm? Well, I know it's biceps brachii and I also know cracobrachialis does that and this one here is deltoid. And I can double check and say, yep, for sure, I see flexion under action, I see flexion under action, and I see flexion under action. So that's another way that you can use your flashcards. Have fun making them.